Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Marketplace Discussions podcast. My name is Mahmoud Resmi and today's guest is Luis Pereira. Luis lives a dual life. During the day, he helps his family run a traditional offline first business in Goa, India. And at night, he is a creator on the internet where he builds web applications and publishes the occasional article. He is currently tinkering around with AI and is trying to figure out how to use it in order to build useful things. In this conversation, we discuss his latest application, Audio Pen, which uses AI in order to transcribe uh, messy and unstructured voice notes into coherent, structured, and easy to read text. I hope you enjoy today's conversation. If you want to keep up to date with future episodes, uh, make sure to click on the subscribe button. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments section below if you're on YouTube, or feel free to reach out to me at DecafQuest on Twitter. Thank you very much for listening and hope you have a good day. Because, I mean, I'm from a state called Goa, which is a tiny state on the West Coast. Um, and it used to be a Portuguese colony for 450 years, right up to 1961. So even after the British left India, the Portuguese were still um, ruling in, in Goa. Um, so a lot of our culture, um, our religions, our, you know, traditions, architecture, etc. is very, very influenced by the Portuguese. Um, yeah, and like, I, I, I get... I confuse people within India who are not from Goa. Um, and when I travel, sometimes I confuse people from other places because they're like, okay, you have an Indian passport, you have an Indian accent. Um, you know, what, what is this name? Like, are you some drug dealer in disguise? Or like, what's what's happening? Um, I've had issues at like, at immigration. Uh, at a oh my places. God. Yeah, you did? Any <laughs> Issues particular... meaning like, you know, extra questions. Like they send you to this other room. Uh, like just, just last year, I was, I had traveled to the US um, and I was I was stopping in New York on my way to South America for a for a short holiday, um, and the immigration officials like kept me aside and made me go to this other room and wait for like twenty minutes. And I was just shitting bricks because I had no idea what to do. I'm just like landed from India after like a you know seventeen eighteen hour flight, um, and then they were just like tell us your real story, like where are you from, um, what are you actually here for? Like your name sounds like it's South American. You look and you know you speak like an Indian. Um, you're coming to America, then you're going to South America, then you're coming back to America, then you're going back to India. Like, what's the deal? Like, you know, tell us the truth. And I was like, I had to give them like a history lesson, being like, hey guys, the Portuguese colonized my state. Um, and then within a couple of minutes, they were like, okay, okay, cool. Um, sounds good. Um, and they let me go. But um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's fun in retrospect, not in the moment. Uh, in retrospect, yes, I mean, and and those uh, these stories usually stick with you. But I'm, I mean, you have a story to tell whenever you're you're on a yeah, podcast like, like this one as well. So it's it's quite interesting. But yeah, in the moment, you're like, shit, am I ever going to be leaving, or yeah. will they deport me? Just you know, I mean, your trajectory is also a bit was a bit curious, you know, U.S. Yeah, South exactly. America back, yeah. Exactly. Uh, do you speak? Uh, the language or not Portuguese? I don't. Um, so a lot of people in my state do, although it is like a dying um, sort of language, like less and less people now. So most of the older generation. So like my mom's side of the family does speak it. Uh, my dad's side, not so much. Um, and like for us as kids, we've not, we've not picked it up. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, uh, you uh, learn something new every day. So <laughs> uh, this is it for the podcast. Thank you very much, Luis. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for uh, agreeing to, to do this and uh, going uh, back to uh, like the story of how we met was interesting because you signed up for one of my courses, which I forgot. Yep. Uh, was it intro? Introduction to philosophy? It was, it was stoicism, uh, introduction to philosophy and stoicism. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember the exact had... title, but it was it it had like I did the stoicism bit and then um, you know went on to other things I didn't end up um, completing. Yeah, but yeah, I, I remember I, I remember learning a lot in the couple of lectures that I attended, and then life just got in the way. Uh, but I do plan on getting back to it at some point. 
I mean, thank you very much for also signing up for for my course. I I cannot remember when when that was. Was it summer? It was one of the earlier ones, man. Like maybe one of the like yeah, the second like two one years ago one. almost. Yeah, 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 probably, probably. Yeah, it was just and... interesting. It was a time in life where you know things had kind of slowed down um, in terms of you know, the pandemic and everything, and uh, just had a lot going on as well at that point. And I was like, okay, philosophy has always been interesting to me. Um, this just I was. This was this was that time where everyone was learning stuff online, and I was really enjoying that whole process of of discovering new things or, or dabbling into, you know, things that I was interested in to seeing to see kind of where it would take me. Um, and this was just one of those experiments. So thank you for for having it. Uh, did I scare you away? Um, not really, man. I think I I like I did a lot for the first couple of weeks. Like there was a lot of like readings. I would print them out and like write stuff down and think about it and stuff. Uh, but I think it was like a four week thing, if I'm not wrong, four or five week thing. Um, and then just like something just happened in the middle. I don't remember what. And um, it was two sessions. See, this is the thing. These are the early ones and we're going to be talking about, about your, your journey today, but this is, this is part of the iteration process, right? When, when you start building something or when, uh, you ship a product at first, and then the first course I ever gave was nine weeks long, two, two hours uh, or twice a week. And then mm -hmm. I reduced it to four weeks twice a week. And then now, and then I reduced it to four sessions. So four weeks, one session a week. And now it's only three. Three weeks, I understood one session a week? Exactly. Uh, so I consolidated the course and then, you know, you learn as you go and then you see what have people you, have are you interested in. Have you experimented with like a one week, but like three sessions uh, in that week? I have not experimented. Uh, I thought about it, but that might be nature, interesting. You because think? like, for instance, like it's very difficult for me to predict what life will look like in three weeks, um, given the nature of work. And, you know, I mean, the further out, the, the longer a course takes the, 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 the more difficult it is, it is to predict what you'll be up to at the end of it. Um, but if it was like a one week thing where you could just say, okay, I have this week, um, even if it's a snap judgment that, okay, the course is starting tomorrow, looks like a light week, why not learn something? Um, and then just power through, um, like intensity when you're learning something new is just generally very high um, at the start. So why not take advantage of that and just cram everything in into like you know, as small a timeline as possible. Yeah, I, I thought about it, something along the lines of what Daniel does, like he gives his uh, course over two weeks time, uh, three, uh, three times a week. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I did think about it and I, I might as well experiment soon. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, even if it's yeah, like a the, mini course, man, might be fun. I, it, I'd enroll. It's, uh, it it's not even a, it's, it's not even a mini course. It's just, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, whatever three, th uh, three sessions get together, uh, learn something new quickly, as you said, and then get people interested in, in these sort of things. And this is where we get, the uh, the bit where you discuss your journey, but before we even discuss any of that, what's your day like now? Uh, at the moment it's kind of chaotic, man. Uh, <laughs> so I... <laughs> I I live like a very dual life. I, I work with my family business uh, during the day, which is like a completely offline life. Um, we run offline businesses that have nothing to do with the internet. Um, so yeah, like during the daytime, I'm, I'm there um, looking after that. Um, and before work or after work at night, which is like right now, um, I just build stuff online. Um, at the moment, things are like one of the apps I built called Audio Pen is, is doing quite well. So just keeping up with with kind of demand and like building new things there and making sure things don't break and responding to customer emails um, is 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 quite hectic to say the least. But uh, I'm loving it, man. It's the first time that a product I've built has had this much traction. So I don't want to complain about the lack of sleep uh, because I would do it again 10 times over. Uh, that was what I was going to ask you about how many hours of sleep are you getting and for those who don't know the story we'll we'll get right into it over the past few weeks what you did how you did it etc but are you are you getting any sleep at all because you i see you man all on twitter active like uh when it's daytime here in spain and when it's nighttime in spain i'm like this guy is uh active 24 hours a day what's going on 
Yeah, I mean, I do, man. I I think for you, what happens is you're you're a few hours behind me, so you're like what five hours behind me, I think, Spain and India. Um, yeah. so by the time you're awake, I'm already whatever up and running. Um, and I sleep quite late nowadays. Um, so yeah, I'm guessing if if you're looking at stuff during dinner time, I'll still be active. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I mean, I get I get it at least five hours. Um, on some, on most days, I get five hours. Um, some days less. Some days Interesting. maybe one hour more. Yeah, for for those uh, who don't know you, uh, you're a solopreneur, builder, etc. Tell us your story. I, yeah, um, I've been I, following I, you I, for I, for two years now, so quite interesting yeah. kind of yeah evolution there. I mean, so so as I said earlier, I, I live like a completely dual life. Um, during the day, the way I like to describe it is is that during the day I spend my time building assets um, offline in the real world. Um, and at night, I just enjoy building assets on the internet. Um, so I write sometimes, um, and I build tools sometimes. Uh, yeah, sometimes I build tools for writers. Sometimes I write about building tools. Um, I mean, I just I just do stuff that's fun, um, and I try to do stuff that I that that you know can sort of behave like an asset on the internet rather than a job. Um, so something that can survive by itself and and generate. Um, revenue or, or just generate value in some form, even if it's not generating revenue, um, without requiring constant upkeep. Um, so I've built a bunch of things and you know, people kind of ask me, well, how are you building and maintaining so many things? And the secret is just, I don't maintain too many of them because I, I design them in a way where they can maintain themselves. Um, and once the initial phase of building is over, they behave like an asset, not, you know, it's like I own something rather than I'm being employed by that thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's what I do. I just, I just build stuff, um, for fun. Interesting. And, uh, some of the things you've, uh, uh, you've built include, uh, for example, nicheless, which is some sort of like, uh, uh, blog, the without... blogging platform. Yeah. Yeah. How would you describe it? A blog without the noise. Status of... Yeah. Um, yeah. so nicheless is an interesting product. Um, I built it purely for myself initially uh, because I felt not, not for myself, but I built it for myself as its primary user uh, because I felt like the internet needed a space where people could just write um, without worrying about the backlash um, or being trolled or just, you know, being ignored as well. Uh, Cause that's also pretty sad. Um, people don't like that. Um, especially people don't like being ignored publicly. So you don't want other people to know that you're writing into a void, right? Uh, and like somewhere in 2020 or so, I think I had dabbled with with writing online um, and I found it quite useful. It was an interesting exercise. Um, for the first time, I realized that, you know, writing is a lot harder than it looks, uh, but it's also useful. And I figured, hey, you know, I, I need to write more online. People need to write more online. Um, and one of the biggest things that, that, you know, serves as a drawback for people or something that they're afraid of is, hey, what if I write something that's just crap um, and people troll me for it or people just ignore it? Um, and I get say zero likes on my post. Um, and everyone can see I got zero likes or, you know, somebody quote tweets me with like a, whatever, some sort of mean comment um, and everyone can see that happening. Um, and nicheless is just like an answer to all of that um, where, you know, yes, you will suck initially, but, and you might suck later as well. Um, and even if you don't suck, like you should spend some time writing for yourself because writing is the same thing as thinking um, rather than purely writing for social validation. Um, so Nicheless is a minimalist blogging platform that you know has no fancy features, just up to 300 words per post, one image, um, no fancy formatting, um, all sort of social comments, whether it's likes or replies are all private to you. Um, nobody else can see how many likes you got. Nobody else can see how many views you got or how many comments you got, et cetera. Um, and it's just, it's like a nice space for you to go and vent or to just think um, or to just express your thoughts about something. Um, no matter how insignificant, um, as long as you feel like you want to write because you want to think about that thing um, without trying to, you know, please someone else um, through your work, but rather just do the work for the work's sake. But yeah, yeah. that's a that's a long description of it. Uh, no, interesting, interesting stuff. And uh, other things you've done or you've built uh, include also read something great. Uh, and uh, most recently... Uh, audio pen we're going to be discussing them in more detail but before getting to the actual assets that you've been building the interesting bit about your story and that 
uh, part I already know is that you dabbled with coding at first. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but then you thought this is you don't you you thought to yourself maybe this is I don't have the patience for this. Yeah, I mean, so, I didn't think to myself. I just failed. I, I just you failed. just I failed. Just... Oh, you, you failed. You fa <laughs> uh, and and so my did what did you study or did you like uh, yeah. uh, university studies? If I studied all? economics, I studied economics, economics. in university. Um, okay. So absolutely nothing to do with. And with then uh, and um, then you you tried learning coding on your own. When when was yep. that more or less? Um, so I graduated in like 2013, um, then worked for a few years in consulting, um, then started a company with a co-founder of mine. Um, and, and both of us were non-technical back then. Um, so all of the tech stuff that we had to build then was like one of us had to figure out how to build it. Um, so I had tried to learn how to code, um, and, you know, to see if I could do that. Um, failed multiple times. Uh, this was back in like 2015. Um, so as a, as like during that process, I discovered a bunch of no-code tools um, that were you know, pretty, pretty basic back then. Um, but I made them work somehow, you know, got, got up, got a website up and running all of payment gateways, et cetera. Um, and multiple times, even after that, since I moved back home to work with the family business, um, there've been like many, many occasions where I've at least three that I can count. And I'm sure there were a lot more, um, where I've seriously thought to myself, okay, I need to learn how to code so I can build stuff, um, on the internet. Um, and just failed every single time, man. The, the feedback loops were too long. It just, it, it took too much time to be able to go from idea to, to, you know, prototype or MVP. Um, yeah. So it's, it's lack of patience. It's not, you failed Pretty because much. you don't have the patience Pretty for it. Much. And that's, I, yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine as well. Uh, ironically, cause we're talking about all that. He, the guy is also Portuguese from the people who signed up uh, for my courses. He's, he's also a coder and developer and whatnot. And I'm like, how do you guys do it? Like, I also tried to learn how to code, not, not necessarily to build stuff. Just, I wanted to learn it's, as you said, like it takes a lot of time and patience yep. and, you know, dedication to sit down to uh, translate or concretize or materialize an idea that you have. And so you threw all that into the trash and what did you do? Like you, you, you failed as a coder developer as such, but then you're like, no, I, I know what I want. I want to build stuff, uh, digital yeah. products. So what was, how did you get there? So at some point I, I sat down and thought to myself that, you know, there are two ways I can do this. I think this might've been influenced by like one of, by one of Naval's tweet threads about, you know, creating stuff online. Um, but he said, you could do code or media. If you can't code, you know, make media. Um, so I thought, okay, media, I, I can't, I'm not very good at like singing or, you know, whatever podcasting, but I can write or let me learn how to write. At least seems like a good way to create media online. Um, so I started doing that somewhere in 2020, um, and did quite well, started a blog, you know, it, it grew fairly, fairly decently, uh, but discovered somewhere along that road that, you know, this stuff doesn't get easier, man. Like no matter if I have 10 subscribers or if I have 10,000 subscribers, it's the same amount of work. I've still got to be putting in 10, 10 to 20 hours every week, um, you know, writing one article. Um, and that's just not sustainable. It's not, I'm being employed by this blog. I'm not, I don't own this, own, own this blog. Um, so at some point I was like, okay, media's, you know, like scratch that off the list. Um, let's figure out another step. Um, and it was somewhere in 20, the start of 2021, I think that I was like, okay, I've dabbled in the no code space before, um, back in 2015, all the way up to maybe 17, 18. Um, and I was like, it's kind of obvious that these tools must have improved by now, right? Like they weren't very good back then, but in all likelihood, they are much better now. Um, so I had like, I just decided, okay, I've got to get to like the bleeding edge of whatever no code is, like whatever the closest to code is that doesn't involve code um, that can satisfy my, you know, sort of need for speed with regards to learning this stuff. Uh, let me find out what it is and let me just learn it. Um, and back then I, I, you know, I, I don't know where, maybe, maybe on Twitter or something, I just saw a bunch of people talking about this tool called bubble. Um, and they seem to regard it as, you know, the bleeding edge of, of the no code world. So I was like, okay, cool. Sounds good. I mean, if, if so many people think that this tool is worth learning and it's amazing, um, maybe I'll learn it. Um, so yeah, I enrolled in one of those cohort based courses that existed during the pandemic. Um, and, um, yeah, I learned bubble during one of those at the start of 2021. And, uh, like after that, I don't think I've, I've definitely not 
like try to teach myself how to code again it's been it's like i'm definitely sold on on no code as 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 a path to building assets online and my my cat in the background i think just that's all right yeah a uh, a nightmare <laughs> so no it was yeah <laughs> he has those but but this is so and you started so you you signed up for for a cohort course and then afterwards you started building because you yeah, know so one my, of where well, we i discussed this with jordan the other day like many people you know including myself you sign up for courses you want to learn a new thing and then you don't put it into action yeah yeah i mean so i i paid a lot of money for that cohort based course so i had to bloody <laughs> put it in action um but what was the that... first thing ever kind of the uh, that, that I tried to build on bubble so i built a tool that doesn't exist anymore it, it was it was pretty embarrassing um uh, now that i think about it but it was a tool called builder bio um like bldr.bio um which is basically a link in bio tool for builders um so my 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 goal back then was during this cohort based course by the time it ends i want to have built one tool with bubble um the simplest tool i can think of that might be useful for people uh, but i want to build something i don't want to just you know attend lectures and and meet people and and not do anything with it um <laughs> so i built this thing i mean it, it was trash um zero paying users um it died soon after um i built it um uh, i mean i shut it down soon after um but yeah i mean without without a few you know terrible tools that i built early on i don't think i would have been able to build stuff um that i'm building now and hopefully like in a few years the stuff that i'm building now will also seem like trash to me um let's see i mean obviously also this is this is a thing like you need to sharpen your your skills and this is the only way to do it right uh ship and then iterate we were discussing mm -hmm. this before or and and with the course now uh right like you start with an idea and then eventually it might not evolve the particular product but then you develop the skills to learn how to maybe uh do things more efficiently and how to structure things in a way for you on the back end to make sense yep. so that you eventually are capable of building a product that would run uh, on its yeah. own yeah i mean like that's the tricky part about learning anything new right like whether it's you know whether you're learning to play the guitar or whether you're learning to to code or learning to to write or whatever um it's it's always about honing your instincts to just grasp the mental models that that thing sort of sits on um and that takes time and and it's it's an intimidating thing to do because when you're staring at it it's like this black box you don't understand anything it's like so you almost you almost learn about it by you know the analogy of the the people holding the elephant and holding different parts of it to figure out what it is you're the one guy who's going around this time elephant um you know one day at a time touching its legs here touching its tail there figuring out that this thing is an elephant this is what it looks like um but you have to and you're doing it blindfolded but you have to do it um and yeah for some things the elephant is smaller like no code maybe for code it's a lot larger so it takes a long a longer time uh but you have to kind of get through that phase um of going from you know uncertainty of of what you're looking at to some sort of an idea of this is what the landscape is like and this is how i can navigate it um you know each time i try to build something here yeah because uh wouldn't you say that uh, your trajectory and journey uh learning and building on bubble kind of led you from uh a simple to a more complex kind of application because as you figure things out now you're capable of solving maybe bigger yep. problems yeah for sure i mean once it becomes second nature for you as to you know how the tool works um you automatically start spending more time on like higher order problems um if that makes sense you're you're less yeah. worried about the minor details and so that leads your i mean it kind of frees up your mental bandwidth to think about more complex problems um and i'm guessing you just keep climbing that ladder um as as the years go by yeah cuz like i i don't think for example you would have uh i mean yeah the, there's also you know the circumstances and the context and how bubble also evolves and i'm i also signed up for i bought your course the bubble course because i was interested in learning how to build on bubble as well and the only reason i have not 
actively pursued it yet is because I honestly uh, don't have the time to mm-hmm. sit down and think about a particular problem because there are so many things ongoing at the moment. But yeah. I have to tell you that, like two things. One, I do in, I also try to learn uh, coding and failed because I don't have the patience for it and mm-hmm. the precision, you know, you have to be quite precise with the syntax and all sorts of weird stuff going on. And then the other thing is that I honestly learned a lot from your course uh, in a way that helped me absorb what you were discussing now, you know, the mental models kind of how to properly absorb bubble and understand the basic framework so that you can go on to build your own stuff. And this is something very interesting because yesterday I attended uh, or when was it yesterday? Uh, the thing I don't know if if it was yesterday or when, but they were talking. About, oh yeah, it was yesterday. Like, wh- whom would you rather learn from? Uh, like, this is the Sahil's class yesterday on Daniel. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone who's experienced or someone who started learning and is, you know, sharing their uh, own understanding. Yeah. And I think in my case, it's been more helpful to learn from you first before eventually going to more you know complex kind of because you yeah you learned it from scratch even though you took a course but then you simplify things in a way that makes sense and i was like oh my god that this is like you got me thinking about certain you know the back end and front end and the much better than a an actual hardcore developer would have that's good to makes hear, sense man. i mean i'm glad that you liked it uh, honestly was... like your the course was really really good like i built the like i did actually apply it and i showed you like i did yeah. actually build uh the joke uh randomizer yeah. tool yeah. i did do that yeah that's cool from a to z like i i finished the entire course and i built the yeah. thing along the way yeah i mean i had i had designed it purely um you know like i said to to get people to understand what the elephant was Right, like just you need to figure out that this is this is a rough landscape of 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 what bubble is, um, and obviously I didn't cover too many advanced concepts and stuff. But I'm guessing people that you know have the time and and inclination will kind of take that step, uh, that natural step um, later. Uh, but yeah, I mean I'm glad I'm glad you you liked it. Yeah, it's uh, it's the sort of tool that you would learn on on the like if uh, in in my case because I don't. Uh, I like I cannot sit I'm I don't know how you work but in my case if I wanted to build something well I know how you work now <laughs> you'll tell us how you work but if I want to build something like this is the thing I I don't have the patience I have to sit for a week or two and just give it my all and because I cannot afford doing that now then I I will never be able to build something because by the time I f- I learn how to you know do the the whatever it is build X I for I forget about how to build X I need to relearn how to build X and then move on to build Y it's like so it's sparsed yeah. over time I cannot do it so I I mean it's it's impossible for everyone in the planet to have the same amount of time and interest for the same amount of things right like as long as you found what you like doing um, if it's keeping you super busy so you can't do you know, you can't discover new things that you may or may not like. That's fine. As long as you already like what you're doing. Um, yeah. Like, but then the this is this is a thing. Uh, uh, all these other apps, uh, maybe eventually we can get to them. But the reason why I decided to uh, kind of ask you to do the podcast now is because of audio pen. Mm-hmm. And I'll start with a a shitty question because I want to start with the shitty question and then maybe move backward through your uh, process. Like, why even bother, right? Uh, with audio pen? Uh, first you off, like, what is... Builder? Uh, oh. Yeah, like, you know, because many people would, you know, those those who would think, okay, but why, like, first off, what is audio pen? And then I'll, I'll come back to, to the, to the cool. shitty question. Yeah. Well, I mean, the so audio pen is, is a, is a very simple web app that is the fastest way for you to convert messy thoughts in your head into clear written text. Um, what it does is it just records your voice. Um, you can talk to it, you can ramble, you can you know say whatever you want. Um, you can even read something if you want to it. 
um, and then it'll summarize and rewrite what you just said. Um, and you like, you know, on the, on like a premium plan, you could even tell it how you wanted to write. Um, so for instance, if you wanted to write an essay in the style of, I don't know, Shakespeare, um, you could talk about a topic, um, you know, you could just ramble about it, even if it's something about your own life and it would just write an essay in the style of Shakespeare, um, or anyone else that it's, you know, it's comfortable writing with, um, anyone else's style that it's comfortable writing in, um, yeah, so it's it's just an interesting way to to go from messy thought to written text, um, and people seem to like it. I mean, it was an accident when I built it, but yeah, it was a happy accident. Yeah, and and this is uh, I I com by the way the the shitty question is just for me to see to to get the you know like the the reason why you might have done that because many other builders right uh, anyone even including myself and absolutely anyone who want to build something, they're like, okay, but why, why would I even bother? Right. Or, or there's already something similar, like, yeah, you know, the, uh, Google, Apple, whatever, like there mm. are applications that record, maybe you can copy paste it on, on chat GPT and they can order it, etc. You, you know, you know where I'm coming Correct. from, right? Yeah. Like, so if, if you ask uh, someone else, everyone is aspiring for the idea, the breakthrough, you know, I need to make something big. And then you're here, you're like, look, there's this, there's that. I'll combine them in a way that makes it easy for people to just record their thoughts and yeah. come up with an easy text. I, I mean, to be very honest, this was a complete accident. I wasn't like thinking about this being uh, a tool on, you know, that would sit by itself on its own website that people would use and stuff. I was just sitting on the sidelines, watching a bunch of people, um, you know, experimenting with AI. Um, and then one week I, I just thought to myself, you know, hey, I need to figure out how to how to build stuff with AI as well. Um, so I applied to OpenAI. I think I had access to their um, to their APIs um, and then said, okay, let's start building. So so traditionally what I would do when I was, you know, when I had these, these phases of, you know, hey, let's go start building something cool. Um, I would sit down and think about an idea, think through it, figure out if it could work, figure out if I could build it in three or four days, uh, buy a domain, set up a website, buy a bubble plan, Know, design the database, do all of this stuff, you know, create like complex workflows for people to log in and buy stuff or, you know, do whatever they wanted to do. Um, and that wasn't really working out because there were a bunch of tools that I built like that, that were just sitting on the side with not too many users. Um, and I was getting frustrated that, you know, I was spending time and money doing this stuff. Um, and so with AI, I was like, okay, let's not like, you know, there could be a hundred things I could build with this thing. Um, I have no idea what to do. So instead of building these things as standalone websites and buying domains and designing databases for them. I'll just build them on my own personal website. So I have, you know, luisperera.xyz, um, which is just my own website. Um, I said, I'll just build a page for all of these things where I just build multiple tiny tools. That's what I call them back then and still call them um, on this site. So no database, no nothing. I'll just put maybe a couple of buttons here on the, um, some text wherever required. Um, and this thing will just interface with these AI APIs wherever required. Um, so no logins, no payments, nothing. Just like small tools, just to learn how these APIs work um, to see what AI can do for me. Um, and so I built like three or four that week. I think right now I've probably got like five or six on the site um, still. Wow. Um, Audio Pen happened to be one of those tools. It was probably built in like a couple of hours, um, like the basic version where it was just a button. You could press it. Um, you could talk, you could, you know, press the button again, and it would just give you a summary at the bottom of what you said. No styles, no, you know, no payments, no, like no complex features at all. Just that no saving anything. Just you talk and it gives you text. You can copy paste that text, wherever you want. Um, so I just built it. Didn't really think that much about it. I announced it on Twitter. Like, Hey guys, I built this tool, go check it out. Um, and there was traffic on my site because of that traffic, meaning like whatever, 50, 60 people, not a lot. Um, people jumping through all the, I had built another one called learn via analogy, which is, you know, you just explain yeah, a concept I and it would teach it to you via an <laughs> yeah, analogy. Yeah. analogy. Um, I built one that, that would have a slider that would, you could tell it an age that you wanted it to explain to your concept in. So you could, you know how you have the explain, like I'm five. Um, I had a slider that went all the way from like, I think five <laughs> to 20 or something. So you could, you could choose the complexity of an explanation of any sort of concept or scientific thing um, that you wanted to learn. So yeah, there were people jumping through all of these. 
Um, and then it just so happened that more people were excited about audio pen uh, than the others. And they were just like, oh man, this is crazy. And I got a bunch of DMs from people being like, dude, this is great. Like I could use this. I'm going to use this. Um, and I was just like, okay, that's weird. Like, <laughs> what, like what's the big deal? It's just summarizing what you said, man. Uh, because I'm not like someone who who uses this kind of stuff very often. At least I wasn't <laughs> back then. Um, I wouldn't talk to my phone and record voice notes and stuff. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. There's something here. Um, and then it so happened that that week or that weekend rather, there was like, I organized this event called Half Day Build um, every yeah. couple of months, uh, which is just like a hackathon for people to to turn up. It's free. Um, a bunch of people. There's just, an upcoming uh, event. Yeah, it's happening this yeah. Sunday actually in like four days. Um, but yeah, people just get together and we try to build our ideas and go from idea to revenue within 12 hours. Um, so I was like, okay, there's, you know, half day build happening on Sunday. I have one idea I wanted to build, uh, but I was like, okay, let me just scrap that, build that before half day build and build this audio pen thing on half day build, because it seems like there is some demand for it. Um, so I just built it, man. I built a fairly basic version on day one. Um, I asked people for money and they gave it to me. And then I was like, holy shit, there's something here. Like people are giving me money for this. Um, let me just double down on it. Um, so since then I've just been like going crazy, talking to people, seeing what they like, what they don't like, just building new things. Um, and the tool has like a ton more features um, from what it had on, you know, on my website. You can in fact compare, like you can go to my personal website and check out the existing first version of the tool. Um, and then you can use the full version and, and like see for yourself. Yeah, and this is like this is it's it's kind of you know your your typical kind of story. I did not intend for this to to become like the most successful product I've built thus far, but it yeah. so happened by chance that it has become. It's kind of sad though. I mean, I, you know, after so many years, you, you I've been about... putting all my work and effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think about like okay, I'm gonna have like a good idea brain. I'm gonna think about a good idea, do some market research, see what people think, and like start something. And like the one that wins is just like this complete random thing you built just to learn something and people seem to like it. So now, now I just question my, my ideas, like, like all my <laughs> ideas are worthless. Like there's no point in thinking through an idea. You just, you might as well just build an MVP, see what happens um, and then scrap it if it doesn't work. Uh, maybe this is the best way to, to go about it because I, clearly you possibly man, possibly. You tapped into kind of a problem people had, and the, 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 hence my my question. Right? Like others might, the fact that it's big, it's been an accident. It's it's not an idea you would have thought uh, about yeah. building. Right? Yep. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, and the, something similar happened uh, with Jordan, uh, with mm -hmm. whom yeah, I, I, heard, I, I recently recorded yeah. a uh, an episode as well. And he's, he's like, he was trying to solve his wife's, his wife's problem. problem. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, okay, let me help you save some time and get things more efficiently done. And then eventually people, he didn't even think it was a product and eventually yeah. it happened. So maybe, maybe this is, this is where kind of the small bets approach. I always like, it always comes up in discussion. Uh, might come in handy right you're also i think a, you did buy uh mm -hmm. a membership yeah, or you, you did uh yeah and the idea here is you've you've always been trying to build things on the side mm -hmm. you do have your day job more or less uh your uh, ceo whatever xyz <laughs> of, of of the family business and then you start building or you're interested in building things on the side and what my my question here is have you ever doubled down on a particular product this one yes like for audio pen i have I'm what happened to... tell me because i like read something great nicheless etc you've always been yeah. you know yeah. focused on but then they clearly as someone who follows you on twitter you you didn't like put any effort into them more than the very basic kind of you know yeah uh, yeah no i agree i think i think the like to be very crude the difference is just paying customers man like this is the first time um so nicheless has no revenue model um i know people are getting value from it but how much value i don't know um, read something great makes money through ads mostly um not too much uh but ads are just an annoying way to make money because you've got to keep you know reaching out to ad advertisers and making sure they're a good fit um and it's just generally 
you become an employee of the ad agency that's trying to find ads rather than you know an asset that's generating revenue for you. So I like I didn't enjoy either of those two activities. I still love the products, but I don't enjoy maintaining them. Uh, I'm not motiv motivated enough to keep um, sort of innovating on them at the pace that I'm innovating with with audio pen for like the moment you have a bunch of paying customers that are actually like like your product and in some cases like love your product it just like you don't you don't feel the need to sleep like you're just like screw sleep i'm going to build stuff like i'm just going to keep building and make sure these people keep like you know validating their love for this product um you know over and over again and and talking to other people about it um yeah there's no better feeling man than a paying customer who like dms you and tells you that to this product change my life or you know I, I, it's changed the way I study or change the way I interact with people or write online or whatever it may be um yeah I mean sleep is is nothing uh, when you can when you have that stuff yeah so you're you're doubling down on audio pen for the time being yeah I mean unless I, I so as long as I can uh, unless I either burn out uh, or you know something happens that I can't foresee but I definitely want to just keep going for as long as I possibly can. Yeah, and recently, for example, you you published it on Product Hunt. I, I how how did that go? That went well. Um, I finished top of the day. Currently sitting at like product number two for the month. Um, but still, I mean, two thirds of the month left. Uh, but hopefully, I managed to stay in the top three. I don't know if I will, but um, that's my current goal. Uh, but went like much better than expected. Like I, I expected. The, the day before I thought, okay, if I can get to, you know, 400 votes, I'm good. Uh, because with Read Something Great, I think um, at the time of launch, I, I got something something below 300 or so. Um, and as of today, it has about 400 on that. Um, but yeah, Audio Pen hit like a thousand. Um, and currently it's at like 1,200, which is ridiculous. Whoa. So yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy. Uh, and uh, any progress and like how... I don't know if you want to share numbers, but then active kind of, or before that, the subscription model, how did you manage that? So, and so I've, I've eventually increased, the numbers of yeah. people who, who signed up so far. Yeah. So I've increased pricing um, consistently. Like as I build more features, I just, you know, gradually increase the price of the product as well, um, both as a way to reflect the value it's creating through like newer features, as well as a way to like indirectly reward early supporters. Um, so for instance, like people who signed up on day one, got the lifetime deal for $19. Um, and if you sign up, yeah, if you sign up today, it's 99. Um, it's probably going to go up in a week's time. Um, but like the product back then looked very different from the plot product right now. Um, and like, it's nice that, you know, those folks trusted me enough with those $19 for a product that was probably worth $19, um, back then, if not, maybe slightly less, I don't know. Um, and for now, I think. So, so because as I raise the price, I think the number of people that buy it has gone down. Uh, but the, I think the kind of people that buy it are the right kind. So because the product has a fairly, um, fairly sort of, fairly fairly good free plan um, where you can you can use it um, quite decently. You can, in fact, if you delete your notes, you can use it forever um, for free. Uh, but without any of the advanced features, um, so you get a very good idea of how it works before you decide whether you want to buy it or not. Um, so the kind of people I get now that that purchase a product are people that really, really value it. Um, um, and those end up being the kind of people that I want to sort of listen to as well. So after they buy it, they give me feedback very often. So I know exactly, okay, these are the top three things that people want. Um, these are the top, top three problems that the app has um, that I need to fix. Um, so yeah, post-product hunt, I think free signups like tripled um, on average. Uh, paid signups did not triple, obviously, because I mean, pricing went up just before product hunt. Uh, but in terms of like daily revenue, um, it's been fairly consistent. It's all, it's all a bit of a spike during product hunt, but at the moment, it's it's back to being you know slightly lower than what it was um, before product hunt, but slightly higher than what it was um, you know at the start. Yeah, the this is uh, quite interesting. Like. Um... I'm still thinking in terms of the, like when it comes to, because you, you mentioned something along the lines of, or the, th the main kind of theme that you've been bringing up is you don't want to become like an employee of that thing. Mm -hmm. And so my, my, what I'm thinking about now is 
do you think this is going to be just one of those kind of products that uh for which you will become an employee because you're constantly I... now trying to refine it add features etc how are you processing all that flux so of... my, my current my current sort of view on that is that the product is just a little over a month old um and i need to give it a few months to kind of take it to a point where the basics are in place um there are still a few you know major things that i need to build um that might take me a month or two or maybe three um and i don't want to stop until those are in place like yes there is a possibility that you know there will be another five things that get added at the end of that period um you know just by virtue of having more customers i don't know um i hope not uh, but as of now i'm going to try and build as much as i can for this initial sort of sprint um of taking this product from you know hopefully what what will end up being escape velocity i don't know um uh, but currently just just burning all on all cylinders man um and then hopefully it, it moves to like a more maintenance mode once all the big stuff is built um and then i can focus on maybe marketing it or maybe even build something else that complements it or whatever i don't know yeah this is like yeah, again your your story is is quite interesting because you're you you're building it uh in a on a no code uh platform you build something clearly useful that has resonated with many people and yeah the i thinking about it and comparing it with for example uh jordan's kind of journey this is this is where uh, i'm i'm doing kind of the synthesis of things would you think that you would get to a point whereby i you would want to grow it and then just get rid of it or would you want to keep it i know it's still early to discuss mm. all these but yeah. then jordan's kind of i don't know if you've seen the the clip i shared recently he was like you know yeah, what with I've... closet tools i want to, i i in hindsight i should have got it to a point whereby i sold it and then let other people uh, grow yeah. it because i'm building off of another uh platform. platform in your case you depend by and large on you know yeah. gpt and stuff like that yeah oh, yeah no I've, I've thought about it um like not thought about it deeply enough to be very honest uh, but like my surface level thoughts uh like i've had people come to me saying hey you should sell this um i can help you find a buyer etc etc already um, interesting yeah i mean a couple of folks um, no no money or no no numbers have exchanged uh, yeah but, but then like the idea is already people are telling you yeah. you know you should kind of yeah. yeah i mean so the way i'm thinking about it right now is is like i have this bunch of early adopters that has you know kind of trusted me with with money um from their wallets um and they like implicitly they've trusted me to kind of improve the product at least to a particular level where it becomes uh worth more than what they've paid for um for some people that's already the case for others maybe not yet um but i feel like i have like this moral duty to kind of you know build those features or kind of give back to these people more than what they gave back to me before i can sit and think about whether you know i want to sell it or not i'm definitely open to selling it at some point it's not like i'm married to the thing uh, but i don't want to have customers at the end of the journey look at me and be like you know what you you cheated us you know you took our money and you didn't do anything with it um we bought this product that sucked um i mean not that anyone said that but like that that would be terrible because ultimately i look at myself as like i've i've dabbled in a bunch of things and like building stuff on the internet is something that i really really love to do um more than writing more than building stuff in the offline world more than pretty much any other professional or revenue generating activity that i've done in my life um so i definitely want to keep doing that um so yes you can make more money if you sell it you know at the, the optimal time or whatever it may be uh but then if you lose trust um you know during that process um then you don't get to play the game again um or at least when you play it again it's a lot harder um so i i want to be cognizant of the fact that you know the app is doing well um people have trusted me um and i need to be sort of grateful for for that um like it's already gone a lot further than than i expected it to go like we like like infinitely further than i expected it to go when it started um so i don't i don't want to be a dick about it like i want to <laughs> make sure that it it works so i can keep playing yeah and the, like uh, again this is this is quite interesting i i don't know like if i were you for example uh i the it, it cut off a bit but uh, you're you're back i i would have 
worried so much about you know the feedback and the stress and maybe you know the constant kind of pressure to improve things and what if i don't know how to do that or what if it it becomes just yeah. bigger than what i am capable of doing but you're handling it very gracefully kind of i mean it's it's quite chaotic man like like i i, I respond to my customers all the time <laughs> like they, they... I don't know how I do it sometimes, but I I figure if it ever gets too much and I'm still in this position, I'll probably hire someone um, to work with me, um, who can you know help me out um, whether remotely or in person. Either ways, uh, but yeah, I mean the option is what if it gets too big to handle, either you sell it, um, you shut it down, or you hire someone to do it. Um, I definitely don't want to shut it down, so then it becomes between selling it or hiring someone. Um, for me at this point, I think option number one would be hire someone um, who can sort of reduce the workload on, of you know some aspects of it. Um, and then see where that goes. I mean, it's an experiment, yeah. anyways. No, it's 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 kind of a leap of faith, and and forget about the the selling bit. It's just like how the the way you're handling it now uh, is. It must is it stressful up to a certain point? Are there are for example people asking you for features you? It's difficult for you to implement now because you don't you haven't learned yeah how to do that. Yeah, I, and I'm quite honest with people. When they ask me for stuff, I just reply being like, hey, I ran into a, a technical glitch <laughs> while trying to build that. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know how long it'll take. Okay. It may take a month, might take two months. I have no idea. Uh, but see, the, the thing is, when people ask for features, um, it's not super stressful. Like, yes, it is a little stressful, but they've paid for the tool without those features. So if I can manage to build those features for them, that's a yeah. bonus. Um, okay. It's not that they get angry with angry with me because they can't you know, have those features. It's just like a polite sort of request from them saying, hey, it would be nice if you could do this. Yeah. Um, so as long as you kind of reply politely and tell them that, hey, I'm, I've got this on my list and here's why I can't do it or here's why I don't want to do it, uh, you know, maybe because it'll, it'll impact the tool in a different way um, that you know might be worse for some users. Um, um, what like as long as you're polite and upfront about it, I mean, so far, like, I don't think there's been any customer that's been unreasonably frustrated. Like, yes, it takes a couple of back and forth during emails, like just sending them responses quickly. But so far, at least they've appreciated the fact that I've been honest and at least I've taken the time to kind of respond to them. Yeah, transparency does does help as well. And you're right, like they didn't buy into it assuming that this is already a feature because you did not promise them yeah. something you did not kind of yeah. deliver on yeah and um on this journey of several years of learning how to build things and how to develop things and how to like developing this intuition for what might or what might not work and might you might not even have developed the the intuition because I don't have the intuition. clearly it, 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 it's that. it's it's an accident uh, of course <laughs> but then like all in all uh what would you say you've learned throughout this journey I'm not a, a few things it. like not be like pick one or two or things that you, you really value that you uh, actually have gotten the chance to uh, learn like in hindsight maybe whatever it is anything that comes to mind yeah i think like at a high level um like i've learned that you have to just keep tinkering um until you find something that you like to do um and then you know double down on that activity so for instance i've tinkered with building a startup in the real world i've tinkered with tinkered with uh, writing online i've tinkered with building offline businesses um done a bunch of stuff and like building products i think i've even tried learning how to code but building stuff with bubble um, is like the perfect fit um, for my life situation as well as uh, my interests um, and now i can't see myself doing anything else uh, maybe bubble or not bubble whatever it may be but like building things on the internet uh, without code uh, quickly um, is just something i love doing so i mean i'm guessing that's different for everyone right like anyone everyone has different interests but stumbling upon that in interest is is a journey in itself um, and most people kind of give up and then just stick with the with whatever the you know the default route, route is um for the rest of their life and that's that's a pity um I, mean, I wish more people would would take the time to to tinker on the side um that's number one um and the second learning is just that it's extremely difficult to make money on the internet like people think it's easy you see <laughs> 
you know, you have you have survivorship bias of, of all the winners talking about it and getting recorded on podcasts and, you know, writing articles about it and whatever. But it's fucking hard. Like, it, it took me two years to make anything remotely close to a, a living wage, which is just happening right right now. Not even two, three years. Um, and before that, I was building other stuff in, in the real world, but just on the internet, like three years to get anywhere close to sustainable. Um, yes, you could get lucky, but odds are you won't, um, at least initially. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you like what you're doing, whether it's on the internet or elsewhere, like eventually, you know, you keep rolling the dice, eventually it'll hit six. Um, you just got to keep playing. And, and the only way to keep playing is if if you enjoy the game and you can survive while playing it. Yeah, that's that's an interesting reflection. Like first, uh, just tinker until you might not necessarily stumble on what you like, but on but you definitely know what you would rather not do. Yeah. And yeah. and this is something I've I've also been experiencing. Like I I dabble with a few things, and then I'm like, okay, I I still don't know what I want to do or where I'm heading, but then I know to a certain extent. And so far as I don't do that, I'm good. Like I would do Correct. it if I have to, but then yeah, if I can, I would rather not. Would and then the other it. bit is the making, on the one hand, it's it's very difficult to, to make money on the internet, but then also showing up every day kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Consistency. Is it like this is... I mean, they're interconnected, always, right? Yeah. Like you show up only when you like what you do. Um, otherwise, like you're just like I don't know, man, going through some army drill of sorts, which, which is just no fun. Um, unless you've got someone behind you with a whip, you're not going to run. Um, so you have to enjoy yeah, then, it in order to show up, and you have to show up in order to win eventually. And but you have to also enjoy it and and show up every day, and also not be demotivated by the fact that for how how long you said two three years not not seeing yeah. maybe any direct results monetary or otherwise and then all of a sudden things start compounding eventually yeah. so it's like surviving long enough for you to, <laughs> to eventually yeah, pretty much make it right Correct. i yeah. yeah yeah it's it's quite interesting because and and it's always nice to do this on the side as well so i mean it's it's very easy to say this, but if someone's you know let's say in a situation where they have to you know be successful quickly because let's say they have a child that depends on them and they don't have money for it, like, that's a very different situation. Then you're not going to say hey dabble and you know see if you, you find what you like, um, like figure out how to survive first, um, like get a job or you know do whatever become like do become a freelancer whatever it may be, um, get that in place and then figure out like use your spare time then to tinker until you stumble stumble upon the thing that you want to keep doing um, and then keep doing that thing for as long as you can do uh, you know you can keep doing it um, until you win and then just keep doing it some more even if you know that victory is, is short-lived yeah something similar to a book i i started listening uh to uh, just today don't call it quits and uh the argument so far and this is not directed at absolutely like this is directed at a particular kind of group of people uh, but uh, and if you feel like you you want to quit your job or whatever it is that you're doing because it's greener on the other side, well, hold on, take a step back, maybe mm. do other things uh, before yeah. you jump into it because it's it's very rough. I mean, on... it's 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 kind of it's just the way the media works, right? Like something I stumbled upon just while like while being a writer, like for you know a couple of years ago. I realized that, hey, you know, writers are the folks that communicate the best um, and the successful writers communicate better than the other writers. And what are the successful writers writing about? Most of them are writing about writing. They're talking about why writing is amazing. Um, and I'm like, hey, these guys have a massive unfair advantage because they're the best communicators and they're talking about their preferred mode of communication. Um, so now there could be, you know, perfectly happy, you know, artists somewhere else who's who's doing much better than this particular writer. But their mode of communication is is art in the real world. It's not you know digital art or whatever. That it can't be communicated very easily on the internet. Um, so you need to like discount the media because the media sort of it amplifies its preferred or it amplifies its own strengths rather as as a sort of as a message to people. I don't know if I'm getting that like you know clearly across. Uh, but like YouTubers will talk about being successful YouTubers and we watch YouTube. So we think, oh, being a successful YouTuber is the only way to go, uh, which is bullshit. Like a, a successful painter is not talking about painting. 
um, because he's just painting. Um, so yeah, I mean that that's like on the internet. I got confused with that for a long time, um, and I have a feeling a bunch of people are still getting confused about that um, when they spend time on Twitter or YouTube or whatever TikTok, etc. Yeah, this is interesting that you bring this up. It's it's quite yeah the the fine line between teaching a particular skill and then just not anything your story somehow like uh, talking about what you do in a way hmm. like it's not yeah. the same if you take a bubble course where you're teaching how you did it by you know explaining yeah. your thought process about it versus just saying oh look i i built a few things on the internet and you can too yeah yeah exactly and yeah, this this got me thinking about so many things but i'll 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 stop here because otherwise it's gonna be a rabbit hole because i also <laughs> did a a course i recorded a course like you two can can teach online but then it was more focused on the kind of tools you can use and uh mm -hmm. what you can like how how to start where to what to do it, yeah interesting no i mean there's there's nothing wrong with writing about writing the, the problem occurs when people that read what you're writing get so convinced that writing about writing is the right thing to do, um, right? Like, yeah, that that, yeah, yeah. that is a problem. Um, and like, you see that all the time with whether it's writing on YouTube or whatever, like people like successful YouTubers talking about how to make successful YouTube challenge, like chan channels, or like successful Twitter audience builders talking about how to make a Twitter mm -hmm. audience um, and then selling a course on that. Like, it's just a... It's ridiculous when you step back and think about it. See, this is this is partly why why I'm I'm thinking about this because the the latest kind of newsletter I wrote or it it's more more than a newsletter. It's just an article I'm I'm writing every uh, other week. I was thinking about about this, like why am I interested in other people's journeys, right? Am I interested in their journeys because I, I want to mimic what they did? Like, for example, in your case, right? I, I'm curious about uh, what you did, the decisions that you made, how you got from point, like from failing how to code the, uh, the, the building uh, successful stuff through no code, right? And my conclusion was, like this is similar to writing about your journey, like doing, uh, making YouTube channels and whatnot. And my conclusion was, is that I'm interested in this because somehow some of your experiences resonate with mine. And this is what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in following the same path or in learning about your particular journey because I'm, I'm trying to mimic it. But a few things about your thought processes and the things that you've experienced somehow are helpful to me in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's fair. It's just that you're fairly seasoned at this point, right? Like you've been around on the internet for a while. Um, you know how things work. It's like yeah. I've seen too many like young builders or whatever who just think that sort of duplicating people's journeys is the way to go. Um, and that's not true because everyone has innately like different interests um, your journey should be about first discovering what your interest is um, and then figuring out what to do with it or then figuring out how to play that game um, and too many people just don't realize that like i i was one of those maybe three years ago yeah four years ago um, so yeah i mean hopefully i i mean this podcast helps at least one more person get out of that um yeah, because sort of uh, I so I will revisit this when when I write the article associated with this particular podcast because it's uh, again it's 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 quite interesting, um, and the end because I know you have to leave in a few uh, minutes. In hindsight. Again, if if there's one particular thing you would have not done, what would it be when it comes to this building? Like, would you maybe focus on a particular niche, a particular product, a particular conception of a product, or would you just think, yeah, no, I did niche, uh, nicheless. I did read something great. I built things across mm -hmm. different categories. All have been good for me to to learn from. 
or is there something you wouldn't have or you would have done differently yeah i mean would have not done i don't know uh, because i mean the entire point of, of failing is that you learn from it um, so i mean i'm pretty happy with how you know where i am right now so i don't want to you know have some weird butterfly effect happen to me <laughs> by saying something like that but in terms of like a, a major approach change that i have now from you know what i've learned especially with you know audio pen is the whole um, you know building tiny tools bit that i mentioned earlier where i would just not devote so much time to trying to think of whether an idea is good or bad and how do i design the whole thing and you know putting so much effort behind an idea before executing on it um and i would just build the dumbest version of any possible idea that i could think of just on my own website with zero friction um and just throw it out into the world and see what people say uh, maybe put a small feedback form at the bottom of every single you know tiny tool that i built um and see if it gets overwhelmingly positive feedback double down on it and and you know build it as a separate standalone tool if it doesn't then it's fine it doesn't harm anyone um yeah i probably do that going forward um as and when you know i have to yeah multiple extremely multiple small bets but then with a validation uh Correct. loop to them anyway yeah. yeah and a small bet that doesn't harm anyone else if it doesn't work out so for instance if you start a like if i had to shut down nicheless if it didn't work out i mean fortunately so far it's it's, it's doing okay uh, but if it didn't um you know shutting it down would have been a problem right like people have their blogs up there so i can basically never shut down nicheless for the rest of my life um which is fine i, I mean i know i can't do that that i knew that before i started it um but like when you're making these small bets like you have to be cognizant of of that fact that your users do not get permanently harmed um if your bet fails yeah you can just call it quits at any moment in time and also this is i think partly where why daniel uh, vasalo says like lifetime but in a way such that i can just you know pull the plug any any time right yeah. so so when i sell lifetime deals i mention very clearly that you will have access for the lifetime of the product um, not your lifetime yeah so which i, I asked you about yeah years, <laughs> yeah if the product lasts 50 years then great if it lasts you know 10 years then that's that's fine too if you survive for you know 100 years like i'm not going to like make sure the product lives for 100 years i mean i wish it does but i can't guarantee that yeah yeah uh, uh luis thank you very much uh for this uh how can people find you before uh we um just twitter like i'm most active there luis pereira that's yeah l o u i s p e r e i r e that's my handle yeah thank you very much this was really interesting and i do have a few other questions i'll get to them afterwards after we, we we stop this but yeah thank you everyone for uh listening and thanks again for joining today cool man thanks mahmoud thanks for having me 